Is there a best slice of pizza? I'm here to tell you that yes, yes, there is. And it's not just a subjective matter of opinions or your taste or my taste. There's an objectively best slice of pizza. I'm your host, Daniel Kelly. Welcome to Intermarifica, New Mexico, the community where we look at questions of wonder from the perspective of reason, both using our faith and philosophy, theology, all that good stuff. Today's question is, what is the best slice of pizza? And to answer this question, first we have to realize that there is a hierarchy in all things that exist. So uh, some things are higher or better than others, and some things are lower or better than others. This makes sense because as uh, everything is created for love and as C.S. Lewis says, uh, love doesn't spring from equality, it springs from differences. And he says that in The Four Loves and we'll probably talk more about that in another video. But sometimes because we're founded, uh, our culture, uh, Western culture is very democratic, equality is very important, we have trouble believing that there is some things are better than other things and some things are worse than created things like um, a chair can't be better than another chair or that's just my preference. So let's look at some uh, examples that could help us to understand how hierarchy is a good thing uh, and just help us to understand it. The first is everybody who studied biology or the study of life knows that there is a hierarchy in um living things, right? So there are more complex organisms and we order them in that way. So that's one image that might help you uh, understand this a little better. Another image that'll help, especially for Catholics, is in heaven, um, nobody's equal to Mary. She's above everyone. She's the queen of heaven. And that uh, isn't a bad thing. We rejoice in that. I, I don't know any Catholic that would be like, oh man, that um, that sucks that Mary is actually higher than us. And uh, no, that's awesome because we get to love her for what she is. And even for non-Catholics, we could look at, uh, for non-Catholic Christians, we could look at that there are, that Christ is higher. And that's not a bad thing, that we, we love him, uh, that our love springs from that, that we recognize him, that he's not equal uh, to us, but he's above us. That's awesome. Um, and this leads to the next thing that even, it's not just all created things that there's hierarchy. Even in the God himself, in the Trinity, there's hierarchy. Now all per the persons are equal, right? Don't want to get into heresy there. But there, there is still hierarchy, right? Because the Father is the source of being there. Uh, he... Uh, begets the Son and the Holy Spirit processes from the Father and the Son. So that's some complex theology and we could get into it um, more later and we probably will. But there is a hierarchy even in there in the how Jesus the, or the Word is begotten and the Holy Spirit is spirated from the Father through the Son. So there's hierarchy even there. Well, one of the best um, descriptions of hierarchy that I really, really like in thing, uh, in created things is from the Catechism, and it's talking about the different uh, vocations. But we don't need a. We're not talking about vocations today. But uh, it comes from the Catechism, section sixteen twenty, and it uh, it goes like this: What appears good only in comparison with evil would not be truly good. The most excellent goods are something is something even better than what is admitted to be good. So uh, it's good that there's a hierarchy in creation and we want to keep that in mind. So there are things that are better or worse. So now let's take this uh, to looking at pizza. Okay, so objectively looking at pizza, is there an ideal best pizza? Well, yes. Yes, there is. There's something that corresponds to uh, whatever contour in the mind of God corresponds to pizza -y ness like well, there's something pizza -y in that corresponds to the plan and mind of God and whatever uh, and there's something that completely corresponds to this uh, let's read from Fulton Sheen real quick I have this cool book of his that I think he describes it very very well 
God has within himself blueprints of everything in the universe. And this comes from Fulton Sheen's book, um, The World's First Love. As the architect has in his mind a plan of the house before the house is built, so God has in his mind an archetypical idea of every flower, bird, tree, springtime, and melody. There's never a brush touched to canvas nor a chisel to marble without some great pre-existing idea. So everything that there is, it corresponds in some way um, to uh, the mind of God, the contours in God's existence, right? So pizza too, that corresponds to something in God. Pretty crazy to think about. Uh, so let's look at the uh, pizza, the ideal, objective, ideal pizza would have something to um, do with the object. I would say would have something to do with the objective, of course, of goodness, everything is more or less good, more or less fits in with God's idea of goodness. And since it's a created thing, it is by its very nature good and glorify God simply by being. All material created uh, things do that, that, you know, haven't sinned because beats can't sin. Um, so then, but we have to look, there's something I would say culturally about Italianness that contributes to pizza and something about uh, bread, breadness, whatever bread corresponds to the mind of God. And we'd have to look at all those things to get to a concept of what, what is the ideal pizza that corresponds to pizza-ness in the mind of God. I hope that all uh, made sense. Okay, so uh, when we look at this ideal and we have to get this ideal in our mind, I'm gonna leave it a little vague and I'll explain why later for pizza. Uh, why is this ideal important, the objective ideal pizza uh, that corresponds most to the mind of God. Well, Pope Francis says in his Education for Choosing Life that to make any progress or do anything important in life, we have to look at the ideal. Uh, that's very important. Uh, so the next thing, though, for the objectively best pizza, well, there's, a, let's, there's objectively a best pizza that will exist in time or has existed in time um, that will correspond to that ideal most. Okay, uh, so it's not going to be exactly corresponding to the ideal because nothing uh, in all creation exactly corresponds to the ideal except Mary and Jesus, right? That's the only thing that God couldn't have done any better, according to St. Thomas Aquinas. Um, so the pizza, there, it could, there's degrees of goodness it could have, whatever, but there is a concrete pizza pizza that uh, will ever exist, okay? Um, so I don't know, it was probably some, uh, whatever corresponds to pizziness, I think probably it was feeding some really poor person, um, and it was just made with so much love and stuff. That's probably the objective one, uh, that well, best that ever existed, but we'll get more into that in a bit. So the next thing we need to look at, because, uh, objective, it's not just objective. So there is a subjective element when we're seeing well, what's the best pizza or what's this. It's, uh, it's not just subjective if we're just like, oh, that's your opinion and that's your taste and this is my taste, that's, um, that doesn't work. Um, but let's look at the subjective. There's uh, the best, the best that could exist for me personally. So something could be the best that could exist objectively and not be the best for me. Here's a good example from Christian theology. Uh, the vocation of virginity, uh, like priests and nuns and stuff, that's a higher vocation, objectively speaking, than married life, objectively speaking. And that's actually what the Catechism was talking about uh, when it said that what appears good only in comparison with evil would not be truly good. Um, the most excellent good is something even better than what is considered to be good. Um, so it was talking about virginity and marriage, right? So objectively, virginity is higher than uh, married life. But for me, obviously I'm a married man, uh, it would have been worse if I tried to be a priest or a brother because God made me in a certain way to be um, subjectively marriage is good. Now that does mean I'm lower on the hierarchy uh, that my vocation is than other vocations, but that's fine. We rejoice in that, right? Um, in St. Teresa's beautiful image, a garden doesn't just need roses and lilies, it also needs time. So the God's garden of heaven needs all kinds of different good things.
So subjectively for me, the best pizza in the way that God made me, the thing that would, the pizza that would be best for me, considering my culture, where I was born, all these things that God put into the makeup of me uh, would not necessarily be the objectively um, best pizza. There would be a subjectively one here for his taste, how he grew up, how his body works and everything uh, and all the places he's going to be. Subjectively, here's what the best pizza would be for him. So there's an ideal for me and for you what the best piece of pizza would be. Like if I have gluten intolerance or celiac disease, something like that, um, or I'm lactose intolerant or something, maybe the best subjectively for me wouldn't be a wheat pizza. Uh, and maybe, maybe it wouldn't have cheese the same way. Um, but um, again, so that's ideal. There is an ideal piece of pizza for me. Let's go to the subjective uh, concrete. So there's the idea, which we always need to keep in mind, but then there's the concrete. There is a piece of pizza that I will eat in my life that will be the best, better than any other, okay? Uh, that's object, uh, objectively, it's the best for me in time concretely. So, uh, and, and why are we talking through all this? We, it's not just about pizza. We can apply this to many, many things that we could think through. And what's the upshot of all this? Well, the first thing is I can't define what the objectively best pizza is either for me as a person or objectively, ideally, uh, because I just don't have this. You would have to have someone who's a, a really good um, cook, knows cooking really well, and a really good philosopher and theologian to get all that. I don't have those prerequisites. I don't know if it's better, if it's more in keeping with the nature of pizza to have pineapples on it or not, okay? Uh, I don't know that because I'm not a cook. I don't know if it's more in keeping with the nature of pizza to have wheat flour in baking it. I think probably because I think that is a part of bread, but I don't know those things, but those are the things we'd have to consider. So this has been a helpful framework for me to kind of evaluate things. And I use it for a lot of things and I plan to use this framework for a lot of the videos in the future. The second thing I wanted to uh, kind of talk about um, and to final words were, uh, I think this can help us, these ideas can help us to evaluate things to see their value, not to devalue. What do I mean? So often we're evaluating things uh, to lessen their value. If we're doing it for ourselves, that's because it's called complaining, right? We're complaining about things. Uh, this isn't, we're saying, well, look at this thing, look at that thing, and um, it's not really that good. This thing in my life really isn't that good. That thing isn't. Or when we do it for other people, it's envy or jealousy. Oh, that thing that that person has is so good compared to this thing that I have. Um, so instead, I want us to get in the framework of evaluating things still, yes, but not in that um, critical spirit, that uh, uh, bad critical spirit, instead of a spirit of evaluating things to find their true value. And the next, the last thing I want to leave you with is every piece of pizza that you eat, you need to just thank God for, because it could be the be objectively the best slice of pizza you've ever eaten, even if you don't know it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit the like button and drop a comment down below. If you really liked it, consider subscribing and hitting the bell notification so you never miss a video. If you want to help me produce more great videos just like this, please support me on Locals. There's a link in the description. And that you'll get all sorts of good benefits for being a part of our locals community and you'll help me produce these great videos. Thank you so much.